white flower petals were beautifully laid along the aisle with light blue silk decor hung across the room. Sandra and her husband, Troy, admired their event as they sat at their wedding table and had their meal with their loved ones. Sandra thought to herself, This is everything that I hoped for. The event is going great. My family and friends are having fun, and my amazing husband is here with me. I feel truly blessed. Troy kissed Sandra on her forehead, catching her off guard while still deep in her own thoughts. I'm glad you enjoyed yourself, darling. I love seeing you smile happily like this, said Troy. Sandra smiled from ear to ear, full of appreciation and nodded with excitement. Two weeks spent on their honeymoon in the various Greek islands finally ended. Sandra, who didn't get the chance to move her belongings into Troy's home as they flew off immediately after the wedding, finally had the chance to do so. As she was unpacking her neatly folded clothes into the wardrobe, she saw a set of female pajamas between Troy's folded clothes and makeup kit hidden behind the stack. Not the sort to quickly jump to conclusions, Sandra casually asked Troy, Hey, babe, whose are those? While pointing to the pajamas and makeup kit. Oh, uh, they're my mom's. She used to stay over sometimes, so she must have forgotten to take them back, replied Troy. All right, I'll just set it aside so that she can collect it, said Sandra. Oh, no, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Okay, darling, I'll pack it later, interrupted Troy. Okay, then, I'll continue unpacking my stuff said Sandra. Later that night, Troy got all ready and packed. Okay, darling, I'm off now. It feels so heavy, though, to go back to work after our long break, said Troy. Yeah, I know, it always feels like that, but once you get into the groove of things, it's back to normal life again. And besides, as a call center manager, they pay you good money, said Sandra. Yeah, I know. Okay, time to do this said Troy as he motivated himself to leave for work. Troy kissed Sandra on her forehead and waved at her as he walked out of the house. For the first time since she got married, Sandra was alone at home now. Although Sandra wasn't exactly comfortable in Troy's home, as only the two of them stayed in the house with their neighbors' homes all far apart. She didn't say anything to Troy, knowing that he loved the house that he worked hard to finally own. Partially done unpacking, Sandra began to have her dinner and watch the TV in the bedroom. While watching TV, the wardrobe door slowly opened with a creaking sound. Thought nothing of it, Sandra put her plate down and closed it. As she was happily laughing watching TV and still having her meal, Sandra's laughter suddenly turned silent when the wardrobe door creaked open again. My goodness, the screws must be loose. It's okay, I'll just let Troy know when he comes home tomorrow morning, said Sandra to herself. Sandra left the wardrobe door open, finished her meal, and began to sit on the bed as the evening had turned late into the night. While scrolling her smartphone, as she always does before eventually lying down and falling asleep, the wardrobe door slowly closed. Sandra just looked at the door as it was creaking to close. Suddenly, the wardrobe door slammed open, which made Sandra jump out of bed away from the wardrobe, now afraid and knowing that it's definitely not the screw that is loose. Sandra looked at the wardrobe, mustered the courage, and said, I have no intent to bother you, so please don't bother me. I've come here in peace. Assuming that it was a spirit in the house, as Sandra attempted to calm the spirit down. The wardrobe door no longer moved after that. Sandra slowly crawled back to bed and tried staying cautious, as she was afraid that the wardrobe door may move again. But too tired from unpacking her stuff, Sandra finally fell asleep. Deep into the night, Sandra heard a voice whisper in her dreams, Look in the wardrobe. 
I left a letter. It's a letter. A letter. It felt so real that it woke Sandra up from her sleep. She sat on her bed for about five minutes trying to recall her dream before sliding out of bed. Sandra then rummaged through the wardrobe but couldn't find anything. But just as Sandra was saying to herself, I really must be overthinking things. Her eyes scanned towards the top compartment, towards a stack of Troy's winter clothes. As Sandra was continuing to tell herself, I must be going crazy. She went through the winter clothes that smelled as though they hadn't been worn or washed for a long time. Sandra eventually found a gray envelope within. This must be one of the letters we got from our wedding. My dear husband, why do you just leave things everywhere? Said Sandra to herself. Sandra casually opened the envelope and pulled out a piece of paper, expecting to see a congrats on your wedding message. Instead, what she read next were words she never forgot to this day. It read, Dear Troy, thank you for all the memories together. I remembered when we first met how no one else bothered because I was such a weirdo and couldn't vibe with anyone. I remembered how you first walked into the convenience store I was working at, and how I slipped and fell while carrying a couple of boxes of biscuits. Instead of judging me like everyone else, you walked over with that charming smile of yours and helped me. You took the effort to talk to me, and from then on, you came over to the convenience store every day, although it wasn't your usual go-to store. We began spending time out of the store, and day by day, my feelings got stronger. Soon enough, we got together, and after months of constantly asking me, I eventually agreed to stay at this home like an actual married couple with you. You gave me faith that I had my own special person to go through the joys of life together. But I guess I should have known better that nothing good lasts forever. When I told you I was pregnant, I thought you would be happy. I even hinted at the idea of marriage. But you pretended like you heard nothing. At first, I thought maybe you just had a bad day. But weeks went by and you got colder and colder. That painful day, as I still remember, you heartlessly told me to pack my stuff and leave. I couldn't accept the reality that I would merely be your past. Months went by, and initially I thought I could cope and be happy with the baby on the way. But the pain the stress, and the extreme hurt I feel just wouldn't go away. I want to let you know that as I'm writing this, the pain is unimaginable. I loved you more than life itself, Troy. It hurts too hard, and life feels a lot emptier now than ever before. The hope that you built within me for months you crushed it in an instant. These few weeks have been hell and I've reached my breaking point. With that, I shall take my leave from this world. This world that has showed me a little about what happiness is, and mostly what sadness, emptiness, and loneliness truly feels like. Love Crystal. Shocked and speechless, Sandra stayed up all night, reread the letter a hundred times, and wondered if this was all true. Still lost, Sandra eventually called her parents in the early hours of the morning to tell them what she had found. I don't know what to think of anymore, Mom. I'm confused. I don't know if this is real. 
but the pajamas, the makeup kit, the wardrobe door slamming. A voice spoke in my dreams about the letter. Every little detail in the letter, sobbed Sandra. It's okay, honey, calm down. Your father and I will be there shortly, all right? You just hang in there, my dear, said Sandra's mom as she woke up and got dressed. A few hours later, after the sun had fully risen, Troy reached home from his night shift duties. Shocked to see Sandra's parents at his home looking as serious as he'd ever seen them, Troy asked, Hey, Mr. and Mrs. Peters, what brings you here so early in the morning? Troy, I know this is your house, but can you take a seat, please? Said Mr. Peters as he sat down. Seeing how serious they looked, Troy knew that Sandra's parents weren't exactly here to bring joy. Troy wiped the smile off his face and sat down. Mr. Peters handed over the letter to Troy and said, Do you know anything about this? Through his reaction, Sandra and her parents immediately knew that Troy had never seen the letter. A letter dated a year ago, which meant that if it was true, Troy was already dating Sandra when Crystal took her own life. While Troy was reading the letter with a horrified look on his face, Mr. Peter said, Troy, is this true? Troy, answer me, as he was beginning to lose patience. Seeing how Troy read the letter intensely, put the letter down afterwards and said, I can explain. No further response was needed. It was as clear as daylight that every detail in the letter was indeed true. Troy called his parents over and told them about the letter. Troy's parents admitted to Sandra and her parents that they knew about Crystal and what happened and apologized profusely. They wanted to bury the past beneath them and wanted to help their son start anew. Sat there, trying to calm his anger, Mr. Peters asked Sandra, What are you going to do now, my dear? You know I would always support your decision, but, my dear, this man isn't right. What he did was unforgivable, and the fact that the girl killed herself while Troy was with you, it's difficult to accept. Sandra seemed to have her tears all dried up by now after crying the entire night. Calmer now, but still showing trails of sadness held within. She had the time to think throughout the night. Give me a minute, yeah, Mom, Dad, said Sandra as she walked into the room to pack her stuff. Seeing that Sandra was going to leave his house, Troy apologized and begged Sandra not to leave and that he swore he would never mistreat Sandra. Troy begged and begged, saying that it was his mistake and to give him a chance to prove to her. Having her hope completely crushed by Troy's past, Sandra just said, Give me some time to think if I should come back and pulled her luggage out of Troy's home together with her parents. Sandra walked out of her lovely husband's home that day, contemplated for weeks, and finally made the decision that she could never come back. <laughs>